I can get you to pay significantly more for this bottle of water if I first ask you the distance to the sun. Really? Just the distance to the sun? The distance to the sun. Because after I've put the distance to the sun in your mind, this price is trivial. So uh, one of the other things you said is uh, if you ask a girl for a phone number outside a flower store, triggering pre-feelings of romance, she's more likely to give it to you than if you ask her in front of, say, a motorcycle store. So knowing this and also, unless she really likes motorcycles, but um, knowing this and our ability to geo-target ads, how, how might we use that? Like we know... We can say we want this ad to be displayed when someone is in this particular environment. Uh, how, do, how would we use the persuasion component there? Well, uh, so that environment now becomes the persuader. Right. So if it's a flower shop, then that inclines people toward romance. Right. If it's uh, a, a, a different kind of shop, uh, let me just explain the study that was done. It was done in France in a, sh uh, a mall. As young women were walking through, they, the researchers had a very attractive young man, a model kind of looking guy, come up and stop her and say, excuse me, I think you're very pretty. Could, could you give me your phone number so I can call you for a date? Now that's a risky thing, right? When he asked in front of all kinds of other shops, a bakery, a shoe, shoe store, a clothing boutique, his success was dismal, 15%. But when he asked in front of a flower shop, he doubled his success. Right? Because flowers are associated with romance. So if, if a, even a situation can create the concept that is going to be related to your, um, to your product or sure. service. Right? And the other study that they did that I really liked was they had a, a guy walk up to young women on the street and ask for uh, uh, a phone number. And if he was carrying one thing, his results doubled. Really? A guitar case. That's awesome. <laughs> because music is associated with romance. You see what that did? It made those young women prioritize romance over risk. That's a risky thing to give your phone number to some stranger who walks up. But when you are persuaded by the setting or the situation, right, that thing that is persuading you becomes more important than other things that make you decide whether to say yes or no. Yeah. So we could do that with banners, banner ads and display ads too, right? If, we, if we're asking for an opt-in or tying our product to something that would be pre-framed to have a better response, knowing that about the flower shop and the Precisely. car case. So. Yeah. But it's not just about romance. Whatever it is right. becomes elevated in... in um, uh, in, in importance. Cool. So you said if you name a restaurant Studio 97 instead of Studio 17, people are more likely to spend more and tip higher too, tip higher. Um, how do we use this knowledge in developing brands and creating uh, brand messages uh, without having to call our studio ever greater numbers like Studio 7,255? Yeah. yeah, so we, we, d we don't have to do it with numbers, although uh, here's a bottle of mineral water, how much would that cost? Two dollars maybe? Here, seventy-two dollars. Okay, <laughs> so, so, so let's, let's say it costs two bucks, I'm gonna get it at bargain rate, and I can get you to pay significantly more for this bottle of water if I first ask you the distance to the sun. Really, just the distance to the sun? The distance to the sun, because after I've put the distance to the sun in your mind, this price is trivial. So even an unrelated number, not comparing the price of Evian or whatever right. designer to that, right? Exactly. But 
here's what I, where I'm going to say. Now, I don't consider that ethical because the distance of the sun is unrelated to the merits of this bottle of water. But I think we do get to say, before we offer the price, you know how many units of this we sold last year? We sold a million of them. Now, that's inherently related to the merits of this. We get to use those kinds of numbers right, to persuade people that this is a worthy uh, option, and then I think we are uh, allowed to use those kinds of numbers. They're real, they're genuine, and they apply to the merits of the object. Yeah, That's really interesting. So let's talk about banner ads. When, um, you said when reading an article about education, readers who were repeatedly exposed uh, to an ad about a new camera were significantly more favorable to the ad when they saw it later, and that the more that they were exposed to the ad, the more they liked it. Why was the ad not subject to what we call ad, ad fatigue or banner fatigue? Because they were banner ads and people didn't register that they had seen them. Right? They were very quickly presented at the peripheries of the information. And so they didn't register that they had seen that ad many times. And so it, they didn't, the ads didn't wear out. Banner ads have a different quality than other kinds of ads where people register that they've seen them and think that, well, if, they're key, if they continue to send this ad, they're dunning me into uh, assent. Or it must be such a low-level prod uh, quality product that they need to keep sending these and spend all this money on... No. None of those cognitions apply here. They didn't even remember that they saw those ads, and that was the key. It was that they didn't remember that they saw them that made them evade the wear-out effects that normally are associated with multiple presentations. And in that, uh, the rest of that study, was it that they were then more likely to consider the camera favorably when they saw it because they, they had not seen but or not processed these ads That's right. before? What they didn't recognize is that they had become familiar with the, the, the camera and that made it more uh, accessible and desirable. So for us, we tend to say there's a thing called frequency capping, which limits the number of times that someone will see the ad that you're going to run and say retargeting or something like that. So that would argue against a frequency cap, really, right? Right. It, it's the only kind of ad that I know that does so. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. So um, also in how are we doing and rate our performance surveys, you said that focused attention, that that focused attention on their mostly favorable facets without consideration of the competitions and that that improved brand perception. Can you talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. So how many times have you gotten a, a, a message from your uh, your uh, phone provider or the hotel where you're staying. Can you, t can you rate your experience? Uh, can you tell us how we're doing and so on? And when you do that, for if you have a good product, what you'll, what you'll focus on is all the great qualities of that product. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is a Marriott. Which right? is the focal is causal. And yeah, the focal else. is causal. Yeah. So you will then rate it very highly. But if you're asked to rate the Marriott versus the Hyatt or the Hilton, now you recognize, oh, wait a minute. These are good qualities, not unique to this, to this uh, particular organization. So the key for using these uh, kinds of approaches where you ask people to rate what you're doing is never ask them to rate it comparatively. Okay. Ask you people to rate the quality of their experience and, their more, and if you've got a good product, that's going to produce positive, elevated uh, satisfaction. And so would you say generally most businesses should do that, assuming that they have a good product or service? That's right. If you've got a good product or service, you're in good shape to ask people, give us your opinion. Non-comparative opinions. Right. Non-comparative. Don't compare it to your, our, our rivals. Compare it within your experience, how good was it? Uh -huh.